Today we're going to be talking about David's faith fails. So we know and we've learned that David was a man after God's own heart. And he had the same temptations, though, that we all have. And just like us, sometimes he would give in to those temptations. So maybe there have been times in your life um, when your faith in God was weak, or maybe your faith just failed. Maybe a time that you didn't trust God about something that was going on. Well, David had a time in his life when he failed to trust God. So that's what our lesson is going to be about today. Well, David obviously had a reason to doubt King Saul's promise not to pursue him anymore. But David failed to believe that God was going to continue to protect him from King Saul. David was tired. He had been on the run so much. He was tired of being a fugitive. He was tired of sleeping in the woods and in the caves and always being chased by Saul and his men. And David's followers, have, with their wives and their children, were also tired of this fugitive life. So David said in his heart, one of these days, Saul's going to find me and kill me. So doubts began to creep in, and he forgot about those many times that God had already delivered him from Saul. And he forgot God's promise that one day he was going to be the king. So in a moment of doubt and forgetting God's power and promises, David makes a foolish decision. He decided to run and escape with his band of men and their families to the land of the Philistines. Well, now let's think about the Philistines. Let's remember they were heathen, idolatrous people, and they had been the enemies of God's people for many, many years. But in David's disbelief, what he did was he failed to seek God's will and God's direction for his life. Well, we, just like David, sometimes forget what God's done for us. And when we forget God's help in the past, then that makes our faith grow weak. And that's when we're tempted to do foolish things because of our unbelief. And when faith fails, well, that's when fear comes sneaking into our hearts. So out of fear of King Saul, David went out of the will of God for his life. So David and his men made their way to Gath in the country of the Philistines, uh, where the Philistine king named Achish received him very gladly. He knew about David and he had, that David had been Israel's greatest warrior and that King Saul had tried to kill him. And he was really impressed with David's well-trained army of 600 men that had been with him. And he could use some good soldiers like that in his conquests. So David had completely cut himself off from Israel. And what, well, excuse me, Achish was convinced that David had completely cut himself off of Israel. And he was sure that David and his men were willing to be his servants forever. Well, how sad this is. Y'all think about it. David was now out of the will of God for his life. And he and his men are actually seeking refuge in a heathen country where the people not only worship idols, but it's just part of their life that they do very wicked things. Well, Achish gave David and his men a Philistine city called Ziklag. And in Ziklag, their life became more comfortable. They had a permanent place to live. They weren't running out finding caves and things like that. And in spite of these increased comforts, David still wasn't happy. He had chosen his way instead of God's way. And that brought an unsettledness in, him, in his soul. So sometimes going our own way does that to us too. When we're going our own way, that never brings true happiness to anyone. Well, in order to live in the land of the Philistines, David and his men had to continually prove themselves servants of Achish. And to do this, Achish ordered them to make raids on Israel, to steal Israel's provisions. And Achish believed that David and his men were raiding and stealing from the Israelites. But instead, what was happening is David was really plundering tribes that were allies with Achish. But to keep Achish from knowing what he and his men were doing to these allies, David would tell lies. And he'd make him believe that he was raiding the border towns of Israel. Well, in order to keep the truth from being known, David had to put to death every person of the tribes that he would plunder so that no one could go tell Achish what he and his men were really doing. 
Well, David began to realize that one sin was just leading to another. Because when he told one lie, it became, a it became necessary to tell another one and just on and on. So there was this web of sin that David was weaving for himself, all because he was out of the will of God for his life. And things were just getting worse. He was caught in a trap of lies and deceit. And the day that David dreaded finally came at last. The Philistines were going into a full-scale war against Israel. And they just believed that David would gladly go to war with them and fight against Saul. Had not Saul, the king of Israel, forced David to become a fugitive? So, of course, David will be eager to help the Philistines destroy Saul and his people. So, Achish thought. But David's heart sank when Achish asked him to go into battle against Israel and to be the captain of his bodyguard. I mean, what could David do? He couldn't do battle against his own people in Israel and against Saul, God's anointed nor against his friend Jonathan. Remember, Jonathan was there too. But he couldn't turn traitor to Achish, who had taken care of him and trusted him so much. So here David is caught in this awful trap. So as Achish makes plan for the big battle against Israel, he told David that he put David and his men in the rear with him. Well, David was in a lot of turmoil. Only God could deliver him from this dilemma that he had gotten himself into through his unbelief. So with a heavy heart, David prepares to start with his men on the march to Israel. And they marched for days before the princes of the Philistines became aware that David was in their army. And when they learned that David and his men were going with them to fight against Israel, the princes became excited and angry. Well, they confront Achish and they demand of him to know what do you mean by permitting this man, David, and his army to go to battle with us against Israel? They're Israelites. This is their champion that they sang about, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, but David his ten thousands. He is surely going to betray us to regain favor with Saul. Well, Achish protested against him and said that David was completely loyal to him and that he was sure David and his men would only help them in the battle but the commanders of the Philistines would not believe him. And they demanded that David be forced to return. Well, there was nothing else you should do. So he told David, I have complete confidence in you, but the commanders of my army insist that you and your men must return and not go to battle with us. In the morning, you must go back. You cannot go to battle with us. Well, David probably breathed a huge sigh of relief when he heard those words. To return was precisely what he wanted. He had been rescued from his dilemma because he didn't have to fight against Israel, nor did he have to turn traitor to Achish. So he was relieved as he led his man back towards Ziglag where they lived. Well, God had worked a miracle in David's behalf and he was mighty thankful. And David and his men would be glad to be home again with their wives and their children. But on the third day, when David and his men drew near to Ziklag, they realized that all was not well. Because as they got closer and they could see the outline of the city, it looked really different than usual. No one came running out to greet them, and slowly they began to realize that something had happened while they were gone. So they hurried forward and they discovered that martyrs had burned Ziklag and kidnapped their wives and their children. Not one of their loved ones remained to greet them, or no one was even there to explain what had happened. David and his men, even though they were strong soldiers, were so distressed to see their city burn and their families gone, they began to weep. I mean, just imagine how you would feel if you found your home burned and your family all gone. So not only did David's man, men begin to weep, but they also started to blame David for their misfortune. So now David was doubly distressed. Not only had he lost his family, but his men were now becoming angry with him. And they became very angry as they blamed him for their problems. And David had always been able to control them before, but now they were actually talking about stoning him. Well, poor David, okay? His stay in the land of the Philistines had actually gone from bad to worse. His own life was now being threatened and there was only one way to turn and that turn was to God. 
The scriptures say that he, David, encouraged himself with the Lord. God was now his only hope. So David cried out to God for help. And it was good that David knew where to turn when his problems came. David decided he would turn to the Lord. He would ask God to forgive him for his lack of faith and not trusting him and for his disobedience and fleeing to the land of the Philistines. He knew now <clears throat> that his very life was in danger and only God could protect him from these angry men. He believed that God could protect him from his own soldiers, even as God had protected him from Saul so many times before. So David cried out to the Lord, the one who could really help him. God encouraged his heart as he began to trust God again. So have you ever learned to turn to the Lord in times that you needed help as David did? Well, David decides to pray for guidance. He asked God if he should pursue the invaders that had burned their city, Ziklag, and stolen their families. And God affirmed to him, yes, you should pursue them. David then asked God if they would be able to recover their families and their things, and God answered again, yes. What wonderful guidance it was to get from God. And you know, today God's word is our guide. So if we study and obey his word, he can guide us through his word. So David reports to his men what God had told him, and with such a message that came from God, David's men didn't talk about stoning him anymore. Eagerly, they followed David to pursue the martyrs. So after marching for several days, David and his men were tired. 200 of them, scripture tells us, were so exhausted that they couldn't go any farther when they reached Brook at Bezer. So David left those 200 men to watch their provisions at the brook. So while, so he and the other 400 men continued to pursue well, as they searched for the looters who had burned Ziklag, David's men came in upon an Egyptian man who was lying half dead in the field. They brought the man to David who commanded that he be given food and water. And they found that he had not had anything to eat or drink for three days. So after the Egyptian revived and was able to talk to him, he said, my master, an Amalekite, left me when I fell sick three days ago. Well, the young man went on to explain that his master and the other Amalekites had been raiding border towns of Judah and had burned Ziklag with fire. David then asked him to guide them to the raiders. Could you bring me down to this company of Amalekites, David asked. And the Egyptian replied, promise you'll not kill me nor return me to my master and I'll bring you to them. So David gave his promise. So no doubt, in answer to David's prayer, God had led David's soldiers to find this man. So guided by this young Egyptian, David and his men came upon the Amalekites who had burned the city and had stolen their families. And when David and his men descended upon them, they were celebrating their success. They were eating and drinking and dancing because of everything that they had plundered. And surprised and unprepared, the Amalekites were not able to fend off David and his men. So God helped David and his men destroy this wicked army with only 400 uh, young Amalekites able to escape. But most important of all, David and his men found their families all safe and unharmed. They were thrilled to be re reunited with their families. And it was a very happy time for the very distressed captives and their rescuers. Well, besides their families, they also recovered their stolen goods and all the riches the Amalekites had stolen, which included their flocks and their herds. Some of David's soldiers thought that these 200 men, I'm sorry, David, after they had recovered their things, the men who had been there to recover them began their way back to Ziklag. When they came to the brook, they found those 200 tired soldiers who had been waiting, still there guarding their things and much refreshed by their rest. And some of the soldiers thought that these 200 men should only get their families back and not any of the other things of the Amalekites. But David would not hear of it. He insisted those who stayed by the stuff shall be rewarded equally with all of those who went into battle. So it was a happy day when David and all his men and their families returned to Ziklag. But what a lesson David had to learn. 
David's lack of faith led him from one sin to another, from one problem to another. And only when he returned to trust God did God take the big problem and turn it around for David's good. So just as with David, you may face a time in your life when you'll be tempted to fail to trust God like David did. But remember too, you can cry out to God for help. God does not forsake us when we make mistakes or when we sin, he's always willing to bring us back into fellowship with him again. And it's never too late to ask for his forgiveness and his help. So David had many, many troubles in his lifetime. He wrote in Psalms 34, 19, there are many afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. David certainly wasn't perfect. Sometimes he made mistakes just like we do, but when he repented, God forgave him as he will always forgive us. But how much better it is just to trust God in the first place. Then we'll not make foolish mistakes and get into trouble. So let's ask God to give us a strong faith in him and help us to live obediently to him.